Hello everybody and welcome to day 11 of our 100 day corrective exercise and scripture reading challenge. We are finally done addressing our overactive muscles and now we're going to start focusing on those underactive muscles and working on some strength movements for activation. So today we're starting with a scripture that comes from one of the famous stories about Jesus. So this one is going to help you understand what Jesus does when you do decide to repent and turn away from your sin. So here we go with John 8, 1 through 11. Jesus forgives an adulterous woman. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. At dawn, he appeared again in the temple courts, where all the people gathered around him, and he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law of Moses commanded us to stone such a woman. Now what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, If any one of you is without, without sin, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. At this, those who heard began to go away one at a time, the older ones first, until only Jesus was left with the woman still standing there. Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go now and leave your life of sin. So there you have it. When we decide to trust in Jesus and lay down our sin at his feet, he is ready to forgive us everything and neither will he condemn us any longer. But it also means that we need to do something different. We need to turn away from that sin. We need to act in a different way. There's a change we need to make. And I'm going to read you what my Bible notes say about this. It says, Jesus didn't condemn the woman accused of adultery, but neither did he ignore or condone her sin. He told her to leave her life of sin. Jesus stands ready to forgive any sin in your life, but confession and repentance mean a change of heart. With God's help, we can accept Christ's forgiveness and stop our wrongdoing. And like I said yesterday, it's a baby steps baby steps day after day after day becoming more and more like Christ every single day and that's the same thing with corrective exercise it is baby steps every single day changing what needs to be changed and our very first um, muscle that we addressed with foam rolling was our lats so normally if you have tight lats it means you have weak transverse abdominis so you need to do something about it you need to strengthen your transverse abdominis to address your weak lats. So you need to make a change. So I'm going to show you um, three of the main movements that you can do to help address that. So the first one is plank. Now I'm going to show you how to get into plank and it might help you do a better plank. So I'm going to tell you to get into plank from the floor. So bring yourself all the way to the floor. And if you're going to do a forearm plank, you're going to press through your toes and your elbows. Inhale, exhale, squeeze your glutes and squeeze your core and bring yourself up. And that way you're very low in your plank. So that's the best way to keep a low plank. So I'll see people go into plank like this. And a lot of times they'll start here and we have to always tell them to lower your glutes, squeeze your glutes. So this is the arms plank or high plank. High plank is less difficult than low plank. So any way you do it, you want to be in one straight line. 
You don't want to be looking at your toes. You don't want to be up like this. You don't want to bow your back and you don't want your, your booty to be up. You just want to be in one straight line, which takes strength from your transverse abdominis because you need to squeeze your glutes. You need to squeeze your core and keep yourself totally straight. So that's your plank. So that's one you can practice. And like I said, starting from here and squeezing to bring yourself up. See how that happens? Inhale, exhale, squeeze. And that's what brings you up. And that way you're not too high, you're not too low, you're not bowing your back. That is plank. Then we have our stability ball. So we're gonna do a stability ball crunch I don't really prefer crunches unless it's a stability ball crunch. So you can make your own decisions on that. But with a stability ball crunch, you're, it's best to put your hands on your chest so that way you're not pulling on your neck to come up. So this is your stability ball crunch. Inhale, exhale. And you're gonna wanna do about 15 of these. Okay, I'm going to do five just to give you a sample. All right, that's your stability ball crunch. And then my very favorite is dead bug. Dead bug will always be one of my favorite exercises because it's good for all fitness levels. It's good for osteoporosis um, because you're not going to be doing any kind of curling of your neck or spine. So you're going to stay straight down, hands and feet up, and this is good for all fitness levels. Even seasoned athletes will be challenged by this one, as well as beginners. So this is the most advanced with straight legs. If you're not able to have the flexibility to take your legs straight up, you can start with bent legs here, and then you're going to take one arm out, and one leg down. So you want to make sure that you're making this movement happen by squeezing your glutes. You really want to squeeze your glute on this and be very intentional with this movement. So you don't want to just be like, ah, la di da, la di da. No, you want to squeeze, switch, squeeze, and hold that for maybe a two second squeeze. And all the while, you are keeping your spine pressed into the ground and you are contracting your transverse abdominis here to keep your spine in place. So this is your dead bug. Let's make sure I'm doing the opposite arm, opposite leg. It's a very cognitive move as well. So you really need to think about doing that opposite arm, opposite leg. I find it easier to make sure that I'm doing the opposite arm, opposite leg by adding the stability ball, if you have a stability ball. So this is going to be a little more challenging because now you have to balance. So you're going to do the exact same thing, but balancing the ball on your knee like this. And then if you have the flexibility, you're going to bring your legs up like this and opposite arm, opposite leg right here. Making sure you're squeezing that glute at the bottom and contracting your transverse abdominis and not letting there be any arch here, getting your belly button into the floor. All right, so with that, you can work on three different moves to strengthen your transverse abdominis and that should really be helping with um, your imbalances there. So there's many, many other exercises you could do for your transverse abdominis, but those are three of my favorites. So I hope that you will do these moves and start to have improvement. And um, if you have a anterior pelvic tilt or that low back arch, this is a movement that might help with that. If you stretch your lats and strengthen your transverse abdominis. All right, so I will see you tomorrow for another muscle that needs to be strengthened. See you soon. Bye.